Hi everyone. This is our uh, lecture video one for the strategic management. So the study of strategic management, or I used to call this trauma. Strategic management. What is this? So it comes from strategy. The word strategy that is derived from the Greek word strategos, meaning strategy is a plan of action devised to attain one or more organizational goals. It's a plan of action devised to attain an organizational goal or goals. Meaning of strategic management is a uh, modern version of business policy and involves the managerial actions of scanning the environment to formulate, implement, and evaluate business strategies to achieve long-term objectives. You need to understand that this is not just a band-aid solution for a problem being encountered by an organization, but this really means um, a long-term effect on the objectives or goal or goals of an organization. So definition, it is a stream of decisions and actions which leads to the development of an effective strategy or strategies to achieve corporate objectives. Again, it is a stream of decisions and actions which leads to the development of an effective strategy or strategies to achieve corporate objectives. For example, uh, just an, 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 uh, an overview example of strategic management employed by uh, the McDonald brothers, <clears throat> excuse me, the original founder of McDonald's, yung, the two brothers. You have watched the movie um, The Founder. It's on Netflix. You can see other uh, uh, the, the, the approach that they did to effectively execute their process in serving their clients. So how they uh, did the, the streamlining of their action. First, they went into a tennis field or tennis court, rather, <clears throat> and they plot the design of their store or their production floor. Then from there, they tried to simulate the actual to and fro of each function in developing or in producing a hamburger with drinks. So, para silang nagpa-practice ng sayaw, na habang nagpa-practice sila ng sayaw, na-enhance nila yung kanilang galaw para sa pag-execute nila properly to be more efficient. So, they employed a, a strategy for that. That they eventually come up with a system in working that would help them achieve their objective to deliver fast the burgers to their clients. Phases of strategic management. So we have basic financial planning. Phase 2 is forecast-based planning. Phase 3 is external oriented strategic planning and phase 4 is so strategic management. So phase 1, basic financial planning. Managers initiate serious planning when they are requested to propose the following year's budget. Projects are proposed on the basis of very little analysis with most information coming from within the firm. The sales force usually provides the small amount of environmental information used in this effort. 
Such simplistic operational planning only pretends to be strategic management, yet it is quite time-consuming. Normal company activities are often suspended for weeks while managers try to cram ideas into the proposed budget. The time horizon is usually one year. So, in that phase, in uh, in in that phase, sorry, nag auto play up. Where is that? Yeah. In the basic financial planning, uh, one of the loopholes that managers have been doing, even up to now, uh, this complacency in in managing their their numbers usually very basic yan sa sa mga companies even big companies like who BDO or ano pa mga malaking company Ayala own companies they have this uh, problem as well with 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 a manager in the basic financial planning because they pretend to know the number their numbers or assume their numbers instead of relying on the actual figures that they have on a daily, monthly basis from the previous years. They could have just used what they have in there to jumpstart their next forecasting for the next year. So in phase one, it just tells us that uh, the st strategic uh, management phase one leads to the financial planning of the organization on where do we want to go from this point to next year's uh, goals and objectives financially. Something is wrong with me. Phase two, forecast based planning. <coughs> As annual budgets become less useful at stimulating long-term planning, Managers attempt to propose five-year plans by extrapolation. Internal and external environmental scanning at this point is done. However, the scanning process is ad hoc and time-consuming. The time horizon is, is usually three to five years. This is true for the sustainability of the organization. Uh, having that Five year time frame, three to five year time frame on achieving their their goals, their forecast, so that so they can incorporate all necess all necessary short interval control for them to check if they are hitting the targets or not. By doing so, they can recalibrate themselves the mid year or the next year's plan to eventually change or enhance something in the process that they're doing to hit that goal. Phase 3, externally oriented strategic planning. In this phase, top management takes control of the planning process by initiating a formal strategic planning system. They engage external consultants to help them develop with the plans and avoid low-level managers in strategic management process. Consultants often provide the sophisticated and innovative techniques that the planning staff uses to gather information and forecast future trends. Top management typically develops five years plan with minimal input for, from lower-level management. Upper-level managers meet once a year at a resort retreat led by key members of the planning staff to evaluate and update the car current strategic plan. Such top-down planning emphasizes formal strategy formulation and leaves the implementation issues to lower management level. So externally oriented strategic planning, as mentioned here, they hire some consultants to help them out. Uh, and they really avoid the low-level managers in the strategic management process. They do this to, to have a uh, other perspective on, on what's happening in the organization without their biases and assumptions. Because when you sometimes, when you hire a consultant to tell you how to do things, 
where to do things and to pinpoint to you some loopholes in your processes it is uh it is most most of the times it will be useful if you have already a class in innovation was that innovation management i don't know if i was able to really explain that in innovation management um if you remember if you, if that's in your class um consultants are also discussed there for innovation management because these third parties are not totally uh, into the organization into into your own business and they have this third party eye and seeing what's happening say for example in a basketball game if you are just an audience you can really see what's happening uh, uh, in the game right so it's like the coaches the coach will see um, the plays the execution of their plays telling the players what to do where to position themselves to execute their goal to make a basket or a point so having that third party initiative like a consultant will most likely help companies in seeing the blind side that the managers and top management cannot see or help them see better from a third party's perspective. They will listen to this third party or consultants merely because number one, they paid for this. <laughs> Huge amount of money from company paid for the consultants to help them come up with something and the consultant cannot but dig into the the financial planning dig into the internal data and approach the ex the implementer of each processes stakeholders on what's really happening they have all their own reports uh, the, the, the consultant will just gather this and just uh, present this to the management with the approaches that they laid out. So that's uh, the phase three of having externally oriented uh, strategic planning. <coughs> phase four, the strategic management. Top management creates planning group consisting of managers and employees from different departments and from all level create work group. Plans are detailed to include implementation, evaluation, and control issues. The sophisticated fiber plan is replaced with strategic thinking at all levels of the organization throughout the year. Planning is interactive and people all levels are involved. So at the phase four of strategic management, it's really the involvement of everyone. Let me cite an example uh, with with the organization that I worked in the past, we have this um, consultative phase in planning our our in hitting the targets for the organization financially. So we need to understand wh where the the bottlenecks are, where the uh, pain points are from the ground level who produces <coughs> clients who produces uh, who, 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 who brings money to the company in dealing with the clients so we need to understand if are there any we need to ask questions like are there any bottlenecks that you experience in executing this kind of guidelines from the head office or from the management where are you at now in dealing with this kind of um, memo or guidelines are these helpful if yes or if not 
Why? So we need to conduct a qualitative research just to understand the ground level of those people getting clients for the company. So the moment that these people are involved in the process, the top management can understand where to meet them halfway while taking still the control to avoid or mitigate some risk issues in the uh, in the execution of the proposed plan or strategy for the improvement of everyone else. Uh, we did that. So there were issues that had have been solved that translated into uh, financial or monetary benefit for the company because by just eradicating some of the not helpful tools or policies in the guidelines it it actually uh, brought a lot of clients to join the the company for the loan products that we were offering in the past so um the strategic phases are all the phases of how strategic management is approached and planned. That when we do the strategizing, it is not just one person involved. There's a takeaway in, the, in those four phases. It's not just the uh, gun are the days that the top management dictates everything from the top. It's really getting the right information the right uh, data for an informed decision in executing the next year's target or objectives so what are the benefits of strategic management clearer sense of strategic vision for the firm <coughs> sharper focus on what is strategically important Improve understanding of a rapidly changing environment. Emphasize, emphasize long-term performance. To be successful in the long run, companies must not be able na putol, current activities to satisfy an existing market, but they must also, let's just check that. Putol uh, kasi yun. Here. Sorry for that. So, <clears throat> to be successful in the long run, companies must not be able to execute current activities to satisfy an existing market, but they must also adapt those activities to satisfy new and changing markets. In other words, we evolve as a business we improve through time we learn from the mistakes of the past then we use those information to help us become better in the execution of our uh, goals and objectives as an organization so hindi pwedeng bara bara hindi pwedeng Nag business ka lang yun na yun. You need somebody to tell you about it too. If you are not yet into the mindset of um, process improvement or continuous improvement for for your business, one of the common tools that uh, businesses are doing uh, is really finding the root causes of each bottlenecks in the system by uh, by 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 asking the five whys until they funnel and <coughs> deduce the problem into smaller scale and to really understand the why it happened so it can be um, uh, 
uh, improve. So, isa yun sa mga strategy, yung whys. The why principles, the five whys. So, example ng five whys, uh, eh, kung halimbawa, eh, example natin sa, sa inyo bilang mga sadyante, why were you not able to attend the class? Because, let's say for example, because I have work uh, on Saturday and it coincides with the class schedule. Then, why did you not ask for leave when you fully know that there is a schedule for a synchronous class? For example, uh, because I took a leave last Saturday and I cannot take a leave now. So why did you take a leave last Saturday instead of today, this Saturday, since you fully know that there are only four meetings in that? So just to understand why. Because we had an event, sir, with the family and we need to be there because this and that and that. So doon pa lang, medyo maintindihan ka na ng professor mo. Diba? And just employing the why. Then we strategize. So what can we do to compensate the items that or the times that you were not around? So like me, <coughs> I was not able to have the synchronous class because of a prior commitment that was scheduled one and a half month ago noong wala pa yung schedule na binigay sa amin ng OU. So it's not a justification. It's just telling the the planning so planning ahead i have prepared already the slides last saturday no last last week uh, around thursday but just now we were able to record this because of i got sick so Another benefit, research reveals that organizations that engage in strategic management, daming typo, no? generally outperform those that do not. Simple. Because that involves planning. Planning and planning. That's why, nagpe-perform better yung mga <coughs> nag employ ng strama as an organization. We have employed this strategy in our class now. This is our second time being together. So, we executed a system inside us that your group leaders will handle you, will monitor you because our end goal and end objective is you, we will be the class that is first in uploading our grades at the end of the semester. That is still the goal. So, we were on track. So, for now, let's just end there as a general overview of strategic management and I'll just uh, let you know if there are another lecture videos for this. So with this uh, background of having strategic management, uh, our, our key takeaway for this is really um, it's trauma is being employed if you want to grow and outperform your competitors. It always involves forecasting, planning, involves control and reporting. So, ano talaga siya? It's a loop in the process. Paulit-ulit na gagawin mo until consistency, no? Build that consistency until you hit the goals. So, you just need to be consistent with what you are currently doing and learn, relearn, and learn those that are not helpful in the process of the system that you put into your organization. So, in strategic management, you will learn really to be practical on things that are not contributing to the end goal of the organization or of your own department. Alright? So, plan, check the loopholes in the process, 
recalibrate, and then do it consistently, strategize, change the behavior. It is easier said than done, behavior change, but it can be done by just mere planning and strategizing on the things that you need to do in the next year, two years, three years, four years, and so on. So, like what I said, uh, in the activities, I gave you a tip that when you do this, this can be hit. Those are the leading measures to the lag measures, lead and lag measures. It's another topic, but it is also employed <coughs> in strategic management. So again, uh, I'll end this here. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in your next class or in another lecture video. I will let you know. So for this, please create, okay, last, please create a reaction paper on the introduction of strategic management. What's your takeaway? What's your anything? A reaction paper or reflection paper on what you have learned in this lecture video. One pager lang. One, a one pager uh, paper will do. Uh, Arial size 10. And then I'll give other instruction in our GC. Thank you very much and have a good day.